The dry stone walls around here, are, they're a historic feature and people sort of associate them with the area and so they're well loved. There hasn't really, to my knowledge, been a community venture to do much in the way of restoration. It'd be great to get something together, working parties to perhaps, you know, have a combined effort to um, restore them back to their former glory or at least to maintain them and prevent them from deteriorating further. My name is Catherine Menzies. I uh, live in Gerrera on a lovely property. Um, used to be dairy farming country and now we just run um, a small herd of beef cattle. So we've lived here for um, over 10 years now. I guess coming from Scottish and Irish ancestry and having um, these stone walls, it's, it very much reminds us of that landscape. Our plan is to try and maintain them at the very least or improve them if possible to maintain the heritage. I did a very brief stone, dry stone wall course when I was over in the UK. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to do some of that ourselves, but I'm sure we'll have to put some cost into it as well. When we bought the place, was, it was really overgrown. Vines growing through um, and tree roots that have sort of up upended rocks and destabilised the wall. I think there's probably a few elements that have added to the deterioration and hopefully if we can correct them, particularly with weed management and um, re-fencing the area so the stock can't keep breaking through. Well, we're sort of the um, caretakers of the property now and we feel very strongly about maintaining that heritage uh, link to the past and the efforts of people who have obviously built it in the past and it'd be great to see it um, maintained for future generations. I was commissioned by Kiama Municipal Council. They had done a study uh, for the, uh, the heritage significance of the walls in the area so um, we found out there's a fellow by the name of Thomas Newing who built the walls in Kiama in the second half of the 1800s. Built purely using basalt and used mostly for, for uh, farm, farm boundaries down there and it's one of the biggest uh, dry stone walling areas in New South Wales. The whole area was littered with stone, it was just a means to make the land more arable so they could farm the area and they had piles of raw material to build walls and fences and boundaries. We do other forms of landscaping, but yeah, predominantly dry stone work. Been doing it for over 35 years. Started my trade in the botanic gardens as a landscaper and, and fell into stone work. So in dry stone walling, my qualification is a master craftsman. At the moment, I'm the only one in Australia under the UK Dry Stone Walling Association certification scheme. So there's four levels in, in that, and at each, each level, you're expected to build more increasing complex features and be able to work at a faster rate and work with a variety of different stone types and styles as well. Unfortunately there are walls being built around the place and sometimes in public places that are quite dangerous and it's a reputation that I don't want my trade to have when they fall over and injure somebody. Because it is really disheartening to see people spend a lot of time or a lot of money on walls that are not, not real good, you know, below par. Dry stone walling is the ancient type of uh, construction. It's basically using friction and gravity. And that's what makes it so special to me because wherever it's happened in the world, it's always been done in exactly the same way because the four components for a dry stone wall are friction, gravity, stone, and a skilled human. Basically, uh, there is no binding agent in a dry stone wall. It's all about balance of stone and all the stone being engaged in a certain way that means it's very, very strong and long lasting. I got a, a, an international specialised skills fellowship some years ago uh, to look at bringing an accreditation system over to Australia so people can really take it up as a career and it can become a recognised trade because the demand is huge uh, and it's such a wonderful job to do. I feel like I get to go to the gym, the mindfulness session and a, an art class and a trip to the country all in one on a day's work. So this is, as I say, uh, the only training centre in the Southern Hemisphere for people to be able to come 
and uh, learn all aspects of dry stone walling from, from the basics as a hobbyist all the way to a master craftsman. They're now able to come and all the features that are required uh, to learn all of those skills are here at the training centre. It's a huge process to become a master craftsman. It usually takes people around 10 years to get to that level of skill and to uh, go through the requirements uh, of becoming a master craftsman. The stumbling block for Australia at the moment is uh, that we do just have uh, one master waller, Jeff Duggan, uh, and we need two master wallers who are able to examine uh, candidates coming through the process. So uh, being the nearest to it in Australia, uh, I've been working towards it and I'm hopeful that other people uh, who are currently operating as professional dry stone wallers in Australia also take up the opportunity because the more masters and instructors we have, obviously the, the better we're able to pass on the skills so that there's a, you know, more people can become custodians of uh, the skills, uh, which is great in a country that has the oldest evidence dry stone wall on the planet.